Version 5 of Cabinet Sense introduces its own component options dialog. If you are to click on the dynamic component options, you will now get both the dynamic components and the Cabinet Sense options dialog up. You can simply use the Cabinet Sense one, and there is a toggle for that. We'll bring both of them up side by side to compare for now. The reason why we implemented our own component options is to give you an easier way of getting at and maintaining the data. It gets quite cumbersome when the list is very long. So in our version, what we've done is we've provided collapsible groups. So all of the group names that you see in the dynamic components are translated into group names in our component. You can collapse the entire group. You can expand the entire group. And in this case, we're looking at material. And if we go to any of these subcomponents, if that group is present, it will also be opened. So in this manner, it carries forward whatever group settings you've got in this dialog while you've got the dialog open. So if I wanted to look at banding, I can now click on all the parts and the banding group will stay open. If I were to close the component options and reopen it, it's back to the way it was. However, we can tell Cabinet Sense to save our settings by simply clicking on Preserve. And now if we close it and open it, and we can do this to any number of components. So if we said on our cabinet, we'd like to always have this group open as well as the construction group, we can preserve that as well. What we've done is we've added these two groups to what was already there. So if we go to the subcomponents, we still get our banding group open as we had requested before. In addition to that, once you've preserved your groups, you can also request the group to be sorted to the top. And so the groups that you've preserved are now highlighted in blue, and they're sorted alphabetically underneath the dimensions and positioning group if there is one. And then you get your non-preserved groups sorted alphabetically listed in black. And you can toggle it back and forth. In addition to that, you'll notice at the top of the screen, as I hover over fields, if there is context-sensitive help, it will display in the top. And we'll add more and more help as uh, the system goes on. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the very start of the screen. Let's expand everything, make it look similar to the old version. I want to show you some differences between how the dynamic components options processes your data versus how we do it. Here we have in the component options, a value of 23.622 inches. In our version, it shows with a tilde in front. And what this means is the number is an approximate, it's a rounding to the third decimal place. And the number in fact is not exactly that number. If we go to the Cabinet Sense preferences, you have control over how you want to show your numbers in the component options. So for now, we've got it listed, set it the same way that the dynamic components has. But we have several options. We can increase our decimal place or, or reduce it, or show it in fractions. I just want to show you what happens. We'll click on it. It's now showing what the number is. And again, it's still a tilde in front, so the number is rounded to the sixth decimal place. I want you to pay attention to in the dynamic components. I've got my cursor in the width field. If I tab out, watch the apply button at the bottom. It's 
now been enabled, which means the dynamic components is going to change. You didn't type any change, so what is it going to do? Let's hit the Apply button and look at the numbers now. Over in the component options on the Cabinet Sense version, the number has been changed to exactly 23.622. So the dynamic components is modifying your number on you uh, if you went in and typed 3125 and hit apply. Cabinet Sense is showing you exactly what the number is that you typed in. The dynamic components has rounded it to three. If I put my cursor in there again and tab out, again, the apply button is enabled. If I click OK, the dynamic, dynamic components has changed, physically changed the number to dot three one three. Cabinet Sense component options will never do that to you. As I tab through all of the fields, the apply button is not being highlighted. So we will preserve your numbers. Let's go back and take a look at some of the formatting options we have. We can specify that we want to use the primary units that we want to use will be based on our SketchUp model, which is how the dynamic components work today. We can also say we always want to work in inches or we always want to work in millimeters. We'll leave it at mo uh, SketchUp model units for now. We can set our display format to be fractional and we have control over how many decimal places we want for our metric. We only work in inches or millimeters. Um, we also have the ability to show the secondary unit on the same line. So we can never show the secondary unit, show it when there's an exact match to the second secondary format, or always show it. So let's go ahead and just show exact matches only. Click on it. So here we go. We've now got, we're showing fractional. Uh, on the height, this number of approximately 34 and a half is re in reality 876 millimeters. And so any place where we've now got an exact match for our formats, for our secondary formats, it will show. Um, you can enter in decimal. It will convert to uh, to fractional. It will convert to fractional for you. You can also enter in fractional. Oops. You'll notice as well, the number is highlighted in red down at the bottom. The footer is red and the apply button is disabled. And what that's telling you is this number is not valid at this point in time. We enter inches, and it's been changed. And uh, let's just go back, and let's always show our secondary format. 23 and 1 half. And you can see what the metric equivalent is. Um, that's it. It's easy to use, and I hope you'll find uh, that you'll be able to find your data a lot easier from now on. Thank you for watching.